Good morning to everyone. Let's come back to our subject, expository preaching. Last time we have been、uh, discussing from、uh, step number five, the central pro-、uh, proposition of the sermon. We have seen the first part, and today let's go continue with、uh, the next paragraph that is coming up with CPS. Okay, I will just、uh, go reading your notes. It is easy to emphasize the necessity and importance of the central proposition of the sermon. The problem, of course,、uh, is not to come up with it. The series of steps in the scripture sculpture process should give you a mechanism by which you may. Uh, arrived at a central proposition of the sermon. This step builds on each、uh, other, and they are sequential. Okay, so CPAs. What you are going to do is you are going to focus and you are going to put your brain and you are going to you know、uh, contemporize、uh, the text into your sermon. And to do this one, it it is like. Mechanism, you know what is mechanism? Everything, the tools is ready there. You need to just fit it. Okay, mechanism means、uh, tools are ready, so you have to just fit in. What are your tools? Our tools are step number one, step number two, step number three, step number four. So、uh, we have collected all the materials, so you have to fit in, and all the steps has to go together, and then it has to be sequential. Okay, first of all, we have to read and study the text. Then, secondly, we have to structure the text. Then, we have to see the central proposition of the text. Then, there should be some you know, purpose. Bridge has been changing、uh, the culture of the biblical times to our culture or the out to to, to our audience. Okay, so、uh, we have to do that one in the sequence. A、uh, lot of things,、uh, and then the the all the explanation here are、uh, almost repetition. So we'll just go down here. Okay,、uh, the central proposition of the sermon. Okay, this is also、uh, same as the central proposition of the text. That is the main idea taken out from your text. And that is what we,、uh, the heart of your text. Okay, that is what we call the CPT or a central proposition of the text. Now the same way, central proposition of the sermon. So now you are trying to make your sermon. Okay, all the hermeneutics work has been done. Now it is homiletics part. So you are going to、uh, find it out the central proposition of the text or the heart of the text. Of all the explanation that you are going to explain, or the sermon that you are going to deliver, in one sentence, the audience must know what you are going to preach. Okay, <clears throat> it doesn't matter how、uh, how many verses you take, like one to twenty, twenty one verses you take, but in one sentence, you are going to make a complete sense of what you are going to do. Preach, and that is what we call it CPT, so CPS. So CPS also has two, uh, uh, two, um, you know, in、uh, has involved two things. That is theme and thrust. Okay, theme and thrust. Theme is what am I talking about now? In CPT, we see what the author is talking about. Now in CPS, what、uh, the theme is what am I talking about? And the thrust would be. Uh, what am I saying about what I'm talking about? Now,、uh, instead of author, you are going to put yourself there because that is your sermon, and you will ask the question: What kind of sermon are you going to preach, or what kind of uh, uh, thing that you are going to speak about? Okay, from the text. So we have to、uh, contemporize the words now. Now let's read. What do you understand by contemporization of words? This is basically an updating of vocabulary for effects and if,、uh, impact. We use a, a few catchy words. There is no limit to how much the preacher can use this.、Uh, use his imagination and audience in finding impacting words for a sermonic central proposition. Contemporization of the words means you can you are free to use 
any words okay any words that is relating to uh, today's context um, you are gonna you are not going to preach uh, to the uh, Old Testament or the New Testament sense but you are going to speak to your audience by your modern language okay so um, it is good to uh, update your vocabulary it is good to update your english or your language okay uh, it is not only english but in any other language also you can up you, uh, you are to update okay as a preacher you have to update and you are you can you can uh, bring all the entice words all the words that can uh, actually you know uh, uh, catch the mind of your audience okay you can use beautiful words but don't forget that you are not going outside of your text okay you have to fix on your text because we are preaching expositor preaching okay and contemporization of uh, audience uh, this also you see you are not speaking to efficient church efficient uh, or to Moses audience okay you are not speaking to efficient audience or uh, to Moses audience you are now okay please correct it that what you are not okay it is not you are not it is you are now you are now speaking to your own congregation okay you are now speaking to your own congregation so your CPS and main points have to be personalized you are going to personalize uh, in the sense like um, uh, but for, for uh, when when I say personalization, uh, don't, don't put first person plural of uh, singular always like I or second person you is not good to use uh, first person singular always and second person you. Okay. For example, why I say this one? Okay. Um, I believe or uh, I am righteous or I am sinless or I am now when you put all the positive things to you. I now people will get wrong and when you say you are sinner you are doing wrong you okay when you always point out someone it is also not good okay so you have to be very careful in using personalized but personalized means uh, when you preach or when you make a, a you know a CPS it is always good to use either first person plural or okay uh, 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 or the third person okay uh, see as a preacher okay most of the time your sermons should be first person plural we okay we are sinners okay God love us so always in that way okay uh, so when you make a sermon please remember this one okay we are all sinners it is not you are sinner okay we are sinners okay you are sinner i am sinner okay every one of us a sinner that is how we are going to put it together okay uh but for good things uh you can use you okay you are really the main of god or for positive things but for negative things always include you also so it is always good to say we okay uh, for instance, instead of saying the efficient efficiency were challenged, you you would say we are challenged. See the word we. Okay, we are challenged. Your sermon central proposition allows your sermon to be a laser beam directed to uh, this specific audience rather than a flow light directed to a genetic audience. Okay. Um, so we 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 have to use the uh, f first person plural, and we have to use the idea. Okay, here uh, uh, it's a politic in a sense. Uh, politic is a uh, is is not a good words, uh, but I have to use that politics because. Uh, it's a it's a game that you are going to play. It's a game that you are going to. Uh, it's a tactics that you are going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, in uh, impact your idea, uh, the uh, your audience. Okay, 
uh, we are going to catch the idea uh, the audience so what kind of uh, thing that you are going to impress them for example you are a child of God or you are special in the eyes of God and you are so when you start praising them they will be happy it is not that you are a sinner you are doing wrong you are do now when you point it out okay they will take otherwise so it's a mind play game in the pulpit but not in bad sense okay when i say politics it is not in bad sense okay now uh the cps is always based on the text as the authoritative light source okay you are not going to wander anywhere you're going to fix on your text your cps should be drawn from your cpt for example okay for example before you do in Ephesians chapter 5 for example we have seen in the book of ezra okay chapter 7 and verse 10 uh we see the decision made by ezra that Israel has met his uh, met the decision to, okay to study the word of God okay to do the word of God and to teach the word of God okay so that is the CPT okay Israel has taken a decision to study the word of God to obey the word of God and to do the word of God now if you are going to change that CPT to CPS first of all the theme is what are you going to talk about or what are you going to talk about what are you going to talk about what are you saying about your sermon okay what are you saying so <clears throat> cps starts with theme and theme in cps is always with interrogation okay it should be in the question form okay it should be in the question form okay for example What am I going to talk about here? Okay, I'm going to talk about the decision that has been made by Ezra and I'm going to transfer that one to today's context. So what I am going to talk about is, I'm going to talk about the believer's decision. Okay, it is not Ezra decision. It is the believer's decision. Okay, so that is what I'm going to speak. So what am I going to speak? I have to put that one in the question form. Okay, the question form is, what is the decision or what should be the decision of the believers or what should be the decision of the believers okay what should be the decision of the believer is my theme okay theme is always in question form now in cps so uh, what what is the believer decisions or what should be the believers decision that is in theme trust is answering th uh, trust is what am i saying about my theme or well, what am i going to so i'm going to answer the uh, the question that has been asked in the theme okay in the theme i ask instead of using what should be uh, what is the decision of ezra Okay, I'm not going to put Ezra. What should be the decision of the believer's this uh, believer's life, or what is the what should be the believer's decision? Okay, so uh, when I when I put uh, when I answer that one, I am answering from the text, verse ten. The believer's decision should be, okay, to study the word of God, taken out from the text then uh, the believer decision should be to obey the word of god then the believer's decision should be to teach the word of god or if you are going to speak to the now it depends upon your uh, congregation now and uh, now if your congregation if you're uh, going to lead uh, or preach in the leadership seminar or to, or to all the pastor the decision the the pastor decision okay that the leadership decision or the pastor decision let's take the example that you are going to preach on the pastoral conference okay you are going to take this text so it is not the Ezra decision no, you are going to speak you are not going to speak uh, anymore about your uh, the the context of what Ezra has said but you are going to speak on what you are going to say about it okay so from the, from the text so the, the the pastor's decision okay the pastor's decision what 
is what should be the pastor's decision. Okay, what should be the pastor's decision? That is in the CPS theme. Trust is the pastor's decision should be he should study the word of God. Number two is he should study. Uh, uh, no, he should obey the word of God. And number four, uh, number three is he should teach the word of God. Okay, that is the leadership role we find in Ezra chapter seven verse ten. Now you are going to put this one to your audience, and your audience has to take the word as if you are. Uh, as you are speaking to them and they have to receive the word because you are not speaking to Ezra's audience but you are speaking to your audience okay so that is how you are going to make CPS now following st this step uh, please continue with uh, our text that is Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1 to 20 now what Paul mean to say is uh, the, the question is what Paul mean to say in Ephesians chapter 5 okay now what you are going to say from Ephesians chapter 5. Okay, what you are going to say. Now, that, is, that should be in the theme. And in the trust, what are you talking about? Your theme. Okay, what kind of question did you ask and what are the answers that you find? Okay, you will find the answer uh, from Ephesians chapter 5 verses 1 to 20. Okay. Uh, by the time you submit this one, I will check your uh, uh, sermon notes. Okay, I will check your sermon notes and then I will uh, give you the guidelines of what Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 to 20 says. Or I will give you the real sermon of this one. Okay, don't worry for that one. Okay, so this is the end of the uh, CPS. Next, uh, two, we have uh, 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 two things remaining and that is quite easy. Okay, that is quite easy. Uh, I hope we'll finish up on time, okay? And after finishing this one, we'll go for NTR Geology, okay? Thank you. God bless you all.